Good morning, parents in the Holmes County Consolidated School District. I'm Jennifer Wilson, Interim Superintendent. First of all, let me say that I look forward to working with you as we work together to improve student achievement and to ensure the safety and well being of all faculty, staff, and students. In the very near future, the State Department of Education will hold a town hall meeting to discuss the district takeover and to answer any questions that you might have. Until that time, and as one means of communication, I will be providing regular updates to keep you informed as to what we're doing to improve student achievement and to ensure the health, safety, and well being of our school community. These updates will be very brief and will be posted at the beginning of the week. After viewing the update, if you have questions or need additional information, please contact your child's school. I've also created a dedicated email address to which you can email me your questions, concerns, and suggestions. You will find that email address at the end of the video update. Of course, if you have an immediate issue or concern, please contact my office. This morning, I will address what we are doing to protect our faculty, staff, and students in light of COVID-19, and I will also provide some academic updates. In response to COVID-19, we're continuing to follow the CDC and the Mississippi State Department of Health guidelines. These include, number one, requiring all faculty, staff, and students to wear masks. Number two, requiring all visitors and parents entering the school buildings to wear masks. Number three, conducting temperature checks of everyone who enters the buildings. Number four, requiring students to socially distance within the classroom and doing class changes. Number five, conducting frequent cleaning and disinfecting of high touch surfaces. Number six, utilizing seating charts within the classrooms. Therefore, if we have a need to contact trace, we can easily identify where students were seated. Number seven, defogging the classrooms at the end of each day to decrease the spread of germs. Each defogging application can last up to 28 days. However, we are defogging on a daily basis. Number eight, partnering with Mallory Community Health Center to secure dates for a campus-wide vaccination for students 12 and older. Of course, student vaccinations will require parental consent. And number nine, forging a partnership with Maverick Health to conduct weekly screenings of staff and students. Again, screening of students will require parental consent. Next, I will explain the procedures we implement anytime someone tests positive for COVID. If at any time we are notified that a student has tested positive for COVID, we immediately began contact tracing to identify those students who may, who may have been in close contact with the student who tested positive. Once we have identified students who may have been in close contact, we, number one, contact the parents to explain that their children may have been in close contact with someone who tested positive, and two, have the parents to pick up their children. As required by the CDC and the Mississippi State Department of Health, these children will have to quarantine for a designated period of time. We also provide the parents with additional information and a letter that explains these procedures and the next steps. For those children in the classrooms who were not in close contact, we also provide a letter to parents explaining that your child was in the classroom with someone who tested positive. However, your child was not in close contact. Next, I will briefly discuss the information school districts are required to report. The Mississippi State Department of Health requires all school districts to report weekly, A, the number of children who have tested positive for COVID, and B, the number of individuals who are in quarantine due to close contact. You can see those numbers for all school districts in the state of Mississippi on the State Department of Health website. I will provide a link to that information, which is updated weekly. Next, in terms of academic achievement, progress reports will be sent home on Wednesday, September 15th. Parents, if you have not turned in the laptops and hotspots that were issued to your children last school term, please do so this week. These, these devices need to be updated and then reissued to our students. As interim superintendent, I would like to thank our faculty and staff for their hard work and our parents and the community for their support as we work together to increase the academic achievement of our children, as well as promote the health and well-being of our Holmes County community. 
Thank you very much. I will continue to provide updates to you on a weekly basis. Jennifer Wilson, Interim Superintendent.